says here in Ezekiel 37, 5, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Now, he's now speaking to the dry bones. He says, listen to what God says. God says, it's I, he's talking about God. Glory to God. He says, I will make breath enter you. He's talking to the dry bones. And God is saying, Ezekiel, say these words to the dry bones. The sovereign God says, dry bones, God himself will make breath enter you. And you will come to life. And he says, I will attach tendons to you and make flesh shall come upon you and cover you with skin. I will breathe in you and you will come to life. God is saying, I'm going to do a miracle. You see, in, if, it's in the, if it's just in the sphere of man, folks, we can't do it. Dry bones are, bone, are, are bones that are dry, very dry. That's it for man. But not for God. God says, you know what? Bones, I'm going to bring breath into you. I'm going to be, bring tendons or sinews into you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to bring flesh. I'm going to bring skin. And it says, you will live. But it's all God saying, I, God. I, the almighty one. I, the omnipotent one. I, who can do all things. He says, I will do it. What did Jesus say? He said, you speak to the mountains. Be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, it says, and Jesus said, it will be done. It is God who moves the mountain. It is God who resurrects something that has died. It is God who resurrects something that is dying. But he needs your cooperation to speak to the situation. The word of the living God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It was Moses who declared that in the beginning, the world was without form and void and darkness hovered across the earth. It was Moses who declared that God opened his mouth and said, let there be light. And something happened across the whole earth. He said, let there be sea, let there be fish in the sea, let there be plants. And all these things happened. Let there be a sun, let there be a moon. He spoke the word and something happened. It happened. Glory to God. John the, the speaks about, about the Word in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And he said all things were made through him, the Word. And nothing was made that was made. In other words, everything we see across this, this earth, this beautiful earth, was made by God. Oh, folks, sometimes, I mean, there's some things on Netflix that I think are just amazing. I'm watching um, some nature series from the BBC, Planet Earth. And I'm thinking, look, and I see, and you see all these animals, and, and, and it, just, it just boggles your mind how God designed it all. It just boggles your mind. He's an awesome God. And you know what? He spoke a word, and it happened. That's how powerful the word of God is. Paul tells us that he sustains the world by the power of his word. The entire world. You know, some people think that, oh, it's Russia or it's South Korea or North Korea or the U.S. Uh-uh-uh. God sustains the world by the power of his word. And he wants that word to be in your mouth and in my mouth. So thus says the Lord to these bones. Oh, glory to God. And then you speak the word of God. Every dry bone has to listen and obey to the word of God. Every bone. And in this vision, we realize that every single bone did. Amen? Every dead thing in your life, it has to obey the word of the Lord. Once you speak that word in faith, it has to obey. Because that word of God is so powerful. It is full of life. It is powerful. It is creative. It can turn things around. How? I don't need to know the how. So long as I see the end result. How did God put the tendons on the body? I don't know. How did God put the flesh? I don't know. I don't want to know. All I know is there were bones. Suddenly there was a noise. Suddenly there was tendons, flesh, skin. And then something happened. God didn't tell Ezekiel how. That's why he said, I will do it. Glory to God. So we, you and I, we must prophesy to the situations in our lives. Say to it, it is written. That's just like Jesus. Jesus used the same principle. Here he was being tempted by the devil. And he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say things that were not important. He says, it is written. He just used the word. It is written. It is written. And this was a rhema word. You know, and that's the thing. When you're speaking to your, your situation, whether it's a hopeless situation, or whether it's a dire situation, whether it's a dying situation, a dead situation... 
ask the Holy Spirit for a rhema word. Ask him for a word for that and he will give it to you. I'm telling you, he will give it to you. He will give you a word, a promise that you can stand on. And once you get that, hold on to it and begin to declare that. Begin to declare that. So it means that you have to spend some time with the Holy Spirit to find out what to say. I remember I was so depressed once, you know, you go, when we were oasis, you know, you go to church and there's five people. The five people are my family, bless God, I love my family, but I want more than my family, you know. And then soon it'll be seven, and then nine, I'll be happy, and then two people will come, come back to seven. And then the sixth person is my brother. I love my brother, praise God. And I was getting discouraged. And I thought to myself, I knew the principle of, of getting a word, you know. I thought there has to be a rhema concerning numbers. <laughs> and then I saw the scripture that says, the least of you shall be a thousand. It was a rhema for me. It was a rhema. It was a rhema. I realized, oh, even if I am the least in the city of Guelph, I have to be at least 1,000. And it will happen because it's a rhema. And anytime I, I go across this, 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 uh, this, this sanctuary, you know, and I see all these pews, I speak to the pews and I say, you're coming because the least of us has to be a thousand. I say, you're coming. You're coming from the north. You're coming from the south. You're coming from the east and the west. I say, God, bring the young people. Bring the young adults and young families. Bring the rich. Bring the poor. Bring the old. Bring all people from different tribes and tongues. I'm calling them in. Because there's a rhema inside of me that says the least of you shall be a thousand. Find out what that rhema is for your situation. There's another rhema that came to me once I was depressed and I was at a conference. And imagine you're at a conference and you're depressed. And I thought all oh, my colleagues, you know, they had churches in Ghana, 2,000, 5,000. And here I was with my faithful seven. And the Lord gave me a rhema. Somebody preached. It was, um, what's his name? Bill Johnson. L. Johnson was preaching. In, and, you know, the, the conference I go to, a lot of big names, you know, that come. L. Johnson preached. He's leaving the stage. And then he says, I have a word for somebody. He comes back and he said, Job 8, 7. Well, I didn't want anything from Job. <laughs> not, not Job. There's a word for somebody from Job 8, 7. Though your beginnings were small, your latter days will increase greatly. It was a rhema. Man, I just held on to that word. I thought, wow, God is saying that my end will be better than my beginning. So suddenly something happened in the inside of me. Find out from Holy Spirit what that word is for you. Hold on to it and begin to declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it in Jesus' name. Oh, church, God wants us to speak to these bones, these dead things in our situations. And when they hear the word of the Lord, they must obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So God says prophesy to these dead bones. We have to do it in faith. We have to do it with authority. I want you to speak expecting only one result. <laughs> expect that God's word is going to come to pass. That's what you have to expect. Expect that his word will come to pass. Only one result. If you do, something will happen. Don't speak once. Don't speak just twice. Speak until the resurrection happens. That is where a lot of us word of faith folks, we miss it. We speak for one year. We speak for two years. We speak for half a year. We speak for one month. Uh, we stop. Keep speaking till you see it happen. Till you see it manifest. Look, I'll give you an example. Even God is persistent with us. Bible says that you and I were dead in sin. Right? The Bible says we're dead in sin. But what happened? God sent somebody to preach a word of life to us. How many of you, the first time you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, you said, yes, I will. I didn't. I said no several times. But God kept on sending somebody who spoke the word, who preached a message, a message of life, a message of hope. And I'll say no. 
And then one day I was very, very close. I remember the time. I was in high school and I was very close. Somebody preached and I felt the tugging of the Holy Spirit. And says, you know, you know, you know, you give your life to the Lord. I was so close. And I thought, no. If I say yes, God is going to send me to Timbuktu. I'm going to marry an ugly woman. That is what stopped me. God is going to send me to, as a missionary somewhere. And I'm going to, uh, my, that was, I was young. I said no. But God kept sending somebody to speak to somebody that was dead in sin. And then one day I said, yes. We have to be persistent. The point I'm making to you is that be persistent. Keep on declaring. Keep on prophesying to your situation. That rhema word has to come to pass. Can I hear a good amen? Things will happen when we speak God's word in faith. Your situation has to turn around. You know, first of all, you will hear a noise. Can you say a noise? Let's just look at Ezekiel 37, 7. I, so I prophesy. It says, as I was prophesying, okay, as you're in the motion of prophesying, the Bible says, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. First of all, there was the sound of a noise, a rattling sound. Folks, never underestimate your prayer. Never underestimate the sound you make when you pray. When you declare. To people around, it may seem like a noise. Who does she think she is? Why are you saying that? You are not being realistic. It may seem like that. You're praying in your tongues. Oh man, this is gibberish. Come on. Don't underestimate the noise. Don't underestimate the prayer that you pray. The declarations that you make. Don't underestimate because God works through the noise. He works through the rattling sound. That's the first thing that happens. Your declarations may sound like noise. It may sound like just a sound. But God takes that noise and he starts putting things together. First of all, bone to bone. I want you to visualize this. A valley full of dry bones. Bones all over the place. Many, many bones. Very dry. A large valley full of all sorts. It's a graveyard. Then suddenly... The tendons of somebody's, the, the, the bones of somebody's legs begin to rattle. And then soon it fits to the knee. And then soon it fits here. And then soon it fits there. Then the arms come together. Something is happening. Something is happening. The Bible says, bone to bone. Something is happening. There's this noise. But somehow God is bringing things together. And then soon the skull begins to join the neck bones. And then you have a skeleton. Glory to God. But something is happening. It started with a noise. Folks, I'm telling you, as you make that noise in prayer and declaration, God begins to just orchestrate, put things together. That skeleton is coming together. He begins to fix things. Glory to God. And after it was bone to bone, the Bible says he put tendon or muscle on these bones. And then soon he put flesh on these bones. Then he put skin on these bones. And then when Ezekiel looks, it looks like somebody... But there is no life. But it has changed. You may notice things a little. When you, when you pray and pray, okay, yeah, the person is not yet saved, but maybe they stopped smoking. But they're still not saved. They're still swearing. They're still not saved. You know, they're still mean. Don't give up. Don't give up. If that word, rhema word, is in your heart that says that, if I believe, I will be saved. Me and my household just declare. Just keep declaring. Just keep prophesying. You will be saved. You have no right to go to hell. I am saved. I am believing that you are a member of my household. You will be saved. You will be delivered. Just keep on doing it, folks. Don't give up. Don't give up. You may see little things, but don't give up. Keep prophesying. Because as you prophesy, the word of God in your situation, God will be establishing things. God will be moving things. God will be realigning things. God will be building things. God will be putting things together. What did God say? First, Jesus said, first the blade. First the blade, a sign. Okay, then the head. After the full grain in the head. Glory to God. Oh, the message to you is keep prophesying on your situation. And it says, Ezekiel 37, 8, but there was no breath in them. In other words, it was still lifeless. So despite the reconstructed corpses in the valley of the body, it was still lifeless. Now remember that Ezekiel had already prophesied breath. 
Because the Bible says in Ezekiel 37, 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. So he prophesied as he was commanded. As he was prophesying, then these things began to happen. There was a noise, there was a rattling sound, the tendons, the skin, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but still there was this no breath. You know, and that's where a lot of us say, oh, that's it. You know, it didn't work. And we'll walk away when we don't see the full results. Don't quit declaring until you see the resurrection. Notice that God said to Ezekiel, he said to him again, Ezekiel 37, 9. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and, and, and breathe on these slain that they may live. God's word may take some time to work, but never forget the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Never forget the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit. He, Bible says, he's the spirit of life. What did Jesus say? Jesus said this, that, um, that um, basically Jesus said, flesh promises nothing. It says he's the spirit that gives life. Bible tells us he's the spirit of life. Bible says that the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You want the word of God that gives life and you want the Holy Spirit that gives life. In fact, in this particular chapter in Ezekiel 37, when you go down, it says the breath is the spirit of God. You want the help of the spirit of God. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for help. Ask him for instruction. What to do. Amen. You want to ask for the Holy Spirit's help. Hallelujah. Ask the Holy Spirit to breathe life into your death situation. Ask Him to breathe life into that dying situation or that hopeless situation. Say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Glory to God. The Bible says, I love this, Ezekiel 10, it says, So I prophesied as He commanded me, and breath came into them, and then they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Oh, wow. First, he's put in the midst of a valley of dry bones. All he sees is bones. And at the end of the miracle, he sees a mighty army. I'm telling you, there's some mighty armies in your situation. There's some powerful things that are supposed to manifest from, from the ashes that you feel that you're in. God has a plan to bring great glory to his name. You see, God said all of this to Israel, and he said, so that you know that I am God. It was all about his glory. And that's where I just mentioned to you, ask God for a testimony. Ask him for a testimony of resurrection in your life. Say, Lord, I want to stand and testify that this thing was dead and you raised it back to life. It's all about his glory. And God loves it when you seek his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why the psalmist was going through a tough time of sickness. He declared, I shall not die, but live. Death was staring him in the face. But he says, I shall not die, but live. Why? To declare the works of the Lord. I'm telling you, if there's death in a situation in your life, if there's death in a business plan, a dream, in a relationship, I'm challenging you in Jesus' name. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak. That is if you want resurrection. If you don't want resurrection, then really this sermon is not for you. But if you want to turn around, then I challenge you. Get a word from God and begin to speak life. And God will begin to turn things around. I want to just suggest this. Start by saying, my relationship is not going to die, it's going to live. My marriage is not going to die, it's going to live. My business is not going to die, it's going to live. I am not going to die, I am going to live. To declare the works of the Lord. Start by saying something like that from Psalm 118 verse 17. Or better still, why don't you, you know, I, I, I feel that there's so much to, to declare on the basis of scripture. So for example, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 2. This is not in my notes, but Romans 8 2 says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In other words, you have been set free from the law of sin and death. The law of, 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 uh, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is in operation in you. There's a spirit of life and that's in operation. If only you will yield to it. Amen. Bible says in Romans 5, uh, Romans 8, 28, it says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. God is at work. 
So even when it's a bad situation, once you get a hold of this scripture, God is at work. God is at work. He's working. He's going to work this out. Even if you start declaring this scripture that, oh, God is at work in me. God is at work in this situation. God is going to turn it around. God is working something out for me. Bible says, we know that in all things, God works for the good. This is the NIV version. God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Once you have these scriptures inside of you, you can become like the Shunammite woman. That woman had a miracle son, and the son died. Then her husband asked, and, he was, and she was ready, you know, she was going to the prophet to ask for a resurrection. So the, father, the, son, the, the husband asked her, is it well with you? Is it well with the son? And guess what she said? It is well. The son was dead. But she said, it is well. She declared, it is well. Sometimes you don't know too much scripture, but because you have heard that God can turn things around and God is the, he's the resurrection and the life. Glory to God. You know, because you know that in the fact, because you know that he's working things out, you can start saying, it is well. So somebody asks you, how was your week? It is well. How are things at home? It is well. Because you know God is working it out. You're not just saying it for saying sake. You believe it. He's somehow working it out for your good. You say, it is well. It is well. It is well. Oh, church, my encouragement to you today is to know that whatever is dying, whatever is dead, whatever is hopeless can be resurrected. That is my encouragement to you. And I believe God wants you to know that he can do it. He needs your cooperation. You have to open your mouth and speak to those situations. Will you do that? Will you begin to say, Lord, help me begin to speak? Sometimes, look, folks, I, I, I'm a pastor. I, I hear things. I know people go through a lot of stuff. I know. Okay. And sometimes you hear a sermon like this and you think, is it that easy? No, it's not easy. Especially when you're, you know, when something is dead, you know, you suddenly say there's life to it. Seems really but I'm telling you, as you begin to do that, you begin to have faith stirred up in the inside of you. I want to encourage you. Your life can be turned around. The situation can be turned around with your mouth. God is saying that, can these bones live? If the answer is no, go to a scripture. Say, Lord, I need a scripture to stand on. Be honest with yourself. I was speaking to somebody recently and and uh, the person was very discouraged concerning finances. And, and uh, I said, you've got to see God as your provider, as your source. He says, yeah, I know that. I know that, but. And every time there was a but, and I knew that he was not in a place of faith. So I said, do you believe that God can meet your need? He says, I believe that. I said, do you believe he's willing to meet your need? He said, no. He was honest. I said, then it means you need to have some scriptures that show you that God is willing. He's not just able, he's willing. God, can, God handles truth. Amen. So you have to be honest. And sometimes it means cutting yourself away and spending some time. So Holy Spirit, give me a scripture. Give me a scripture. And he will give you a scripture. Oh, I just pray the blessing of God to be upon you. I pray life into you. I pray strength, vitality, energy. I pray that the things that are dying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the resurrection and life, that life come in.